Hey guys, Pastor Tanner here. We just put out our quick start guide on Logos and I got a great question on this topic. In that quick start guide, I talked about prioritizing resources and somebody had asked, well, what if I don't know which resources to prioritize? In that video, I said, put your favorite Bible version first, your second favorite Bible version next, etc." But some people may have purchased base packages and they don't know what their favorite Bible dictionaries are. They don't know what their favorite lexicons are. They just want good starter resources to make sure that they're setting up their library in a way that is going to be beneficial to them. That's what this video is all about. Here in this video, I want a quick intro to what are some of the best, most standard resources in the field so that you can set up your Logos if you've purchased a base package and you don't know what you want to prioritize. This should be a good starting point for you, and then you can adjust your prioritization after that. Now remember, the order we prioritize in is Bible versions first, then Bible dictionaries and encyclopedias, then our lexicons, Hebrew and Greek, and finally our commentaries. And I'm going to go through those in brief and tell you what some of the standard well-known resources in the field are so that you know how to prioritize correctly. Okay, so first I want to talk about prioritizing Bibles. And what I like about prioritizing Bibles is trying to get them on a range. Your first Bible should probably be something that is more word-for-word -word translation, formal equivalent, more literal in terms terms of its understanding. Okay. And you can see at the far end on this chart, I just pulled this chart off of the Logos forums. I think it's a good chart. You can see NASB or maybe ESV, RSV, New King James. These might be good versions as your first prioritized Bible. Pick your favorite, most literal translation and probably go with that. Because when you're diving into those first resources in Logos, you're probably going to want to have the closest thing to your most literal translations possible because you're doing in-depth study. Now, the second one to prioritize would be your second favorite version or something more in the middle. Maybe you're looking at the NET or the NIV, okay? Maybe the CEB, okay? Any of these translations are going to give you that more in the middle translation. Not quite formal, not quite functional. Instead, you're getting a balanced approach. So your second, perhaps your third and fourth Bibles should be in this middle range. Finally, you're going to want to prioritize a few things that are more functional equivalent, more paraphrases, okay? So towards the end, you could maybe prioritize something like the NLT, right? Or perhaps maybe the ISV or the TLB or even the message, so long as you recognize that this is just a commentary, this is not a translation. Having this range is going to help you because first you'll dive into your literal word-for-word -word translation. You're going to be looking at the Greek and Hebrew, and you might want to start looking at some quick changes. If you're comparing NASB to ESV, that's not going to be as stark. But if you're comparing NASB to the NIV, you're going to get a big difference there, and that's going to help you out quite a bit. So this is how I would prioritize my Bibles. Next, I want to talk about dictionaries and encyclopedias. And for the rest of these categories, here's what I want you to think of. First, you want to prioritize something very simple, something with short answers and definitions. Because oftentimes when you search for something, you're looking for a quick answer. Okay, then you're going to want to prioritize something a little bit more moderate. Finally, you're more technical and then anything that's specialty. Okay, that's going to be the case for your dictionaries and encyclopedias. And it's also going to be the case for your lexicons. Let me just run you through some standard ones. But just remember that simple, moderate, complex. We're going to be going in that order for each of these. All right, let's start with your Bible dictionaries and encyclopedias. First, you want a simple thing. There are many good, simple, straightforward reference works in terms of Bible dictionaries. Erdman's Dictionary of the Bible is one that people like very much. We also have a couple of other ones here that are very helpful for people. The New Bible Dictionary, third edition, is one that people like very much. Okay, and then not only that, we also have the one put out by Zondervan that's a one volume, and this is the New International Bible Dictionary. Each of these are quick references that are going to give you some of those quick entries, quick hits, and you're going to want one of these up first. After that, now we're getting into the more technical entries, okay? A lot of people like the Anchor Yale 
Okay, the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary is a very good one, and this one has that more in-depth study. Now you want to jump in a lot more in-depth into a deeper study. Anchor Yale is a well-known, good Bible dictionary. I want you to know it's a little bit more critical, okay, but it's a good entry. Another decent critical entry as well, I don't think as many base packages have this one, but it's a good one, the New Interpreter's Dictionary of the Bible, five volumes in one right here. This is another good one, good quick entry. Again, a little bit more on the critical side. Now, if you don't like the critical approach and you want something a little bit more conservative, a little bit more evangelical, the ISBE is going to serve those needs, okay? The ISBE is in-depth, similar to Anchor Yale, but it's a little bit more conservative, a little bit more evangelical. And remember, there are two versions of ISBE in Logos. This is the 1915 version. It's also good. If your base package only came with one of them, just go ahead and throw one of them in there. After this, I want you to put in your more technical dictionaries, okay? These are ones that are more specific. You've done the in-depth ones. Now I want you to do ones that are really specific. For example, this is the Dictionary of Old Testament, the Prophets. These are called the IVP Black Dictionaries. They're eight volumes, and the reason they're called that is that they all had black covers, okay? But eight volumes here, and they're on specific sections or books of the Bible. And when you prioritize this whole resource, they're going to give you a little bit more in-depth reference because whatever you look up in this dictionary is going to be specified around the Old Testament prophets. And all of the black dictionaries function that way. Very nice entries. Not only that, but there are a couple of other entries here. The Dictionary of Biblical Imagery is very good, and it's specialty. So, if you're looking for imagery in particular, you're going to want to jump to this one. Having it prioritized would be nice. Another one that I really like is the New Dictionary of Biblical Theology. Okay, so here are just some examples of those sorts of standard dictionaries and encyclopedias, even if you're not familiar with the field. Now you know what some of the standards in the field are, so you know how to prioritize at least starting out. Let's move on now to lexicons, and I want to start with Hebrew lexicons. Again, what's our structure? It's to go from simple to more moderate, finally to more complex. When it comes to lexicons, we are doing simple dictionaries that have very basic glosses, okay? One or two word entries, and that's it. Then we're going to be moving to the more moderates with in-depth number of glosses, a lot of detail, and then finally, I want you to prioritize theological lexicons after that. So let's start here. For Hebrew, I like the DBL Hebrew, right off the bat. Dictionary of Biblical Languages, boom, Hebrew, very quick entries, very easy. Another one that's fairly straightforward is the concise Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament. Keyword being concise here. All right, this is the concise version, and it's just going to give you that basic entry, your basic gloss, okay? Getting into the more in-depth, this is the full halot, okay? Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament. Not the concise version, the full in-depth version. To many, this is the standard work in the field. So, if you want a more in-depth understanding of the glosses that are being presented, this is going to be the one for you. And a good companion to this one is the enhanced Brown Driver Briggs, okay? Brown Driver Briggs is seen as kind of a companion to halot. They're both at a similar level, in-depth glosses, okay? So, those are the ones that I would say for a more in-depth look at the Hebrew words themselves. Themselves. Now you're going to be wanting to prioritize your theological lexicons. What are these? They give you discussion about which ways you should actually interpret the words in context, the etymology, where the words came from, etc. These ones I just showed you, those ones are just glosses, either surface level or in-depth. But these theological lexicons go much more in-depth on where the words came from. The first one I like on this one is the Theological Wordbook of the Old Testament. It's a standard, classic resource, and I still like to reference it. Not only that, guys, but there's the Theological Lexicon of the Old Testament. Okay, this is a good one. And again, it's going to give you that theological understanding as you're reading. Many people believe this next one is the standard in the field, the Theological Dictionary of the Old Testament, 15 volumes. Okay, and this one goes in depth into many of those words and gives you the background on how they developed and how they compare to other ancient Near Eastern languages. Finally, a great one is the New International Dictionary of Old Testament Theology and Exegesis. Again, this is trying to get the background of where these words came from, and these are the sorts of works that are going to do that. Okay? So your basic glosses, your in-depth glosses, and finally, your theological application. And we're going to do that exact same thing for the Greek. First, DBL Greek. 
Okay, I like DBL Hebrew, I like DBL Greek. Basic, straightforward gloss. Not only that, Laonida is very good. Greek English lexicon of the New Testament based on semantic domains by Laonida. That's why it's called Laonida. It's very good. And it gives you the semantic domain numbers associated with this. And it's nice that they categorize this. Sometimes, even if you want to dig deeper, you want to reference Laonida because it gives you those semantic domains. Okay, it compares it to the other words. Not only that, now we're in our more in-depth lexicons. LSJ, Liddell Scott Jones, is a very well-known Greek lexicon. Some consider it number one top dog. Some consider it number two. And usually, if they're going to consider it number two, it takes second place to BDAG, okay? Greek English lexicon of the New Testament and other early Christian literature, third edition. Third edition is considered a great step up from second edition. Both are good, but third edition is considered the top dog in the field for many, okay? So those are our basic and our in-depth. Now let's go into our theological lexicons. First, we have the theological lexicon of the New Testament. Okay. Very good entry. And it's similar to its companion volume from the Old Testament. Not only that, many like the exegetical dictionary of the New Testament. This gives you those glosses and starts to dig a little bit more in depth and gives you kind of the exegetical background for them. Considered the standard in the field, Theological Dictionary of the New Testament by Kittle. There's also an abridged version of this. Both are good. Obviously, the larger version if you want more in-depth study. But this is considered by many to be the top standard work in the field. And then finally, Moises Silva put out five volumes, New International Dictionary of the New Testament Theology and Exegesis. Okay, and this is another one in this realm. These are by no means exhaustive, but they're meant to give you examples of some of the standard works in the field so you can get a basic priority off the bat. Finally, I want to jump into our commentaries. Now, we could do a huge in-depth survey of the commentaries. There's so many different commentary sets out there, and you may not have any clue which ones that you want to jump into. But that's why I want to give you this little tool, this little resource. I'm going to be reviewing commentary sets on this channel in the future, so you can get a better feel for what you like. But here's the bottom line, guys. Here is a website, bestcommentaries.com, dedicated to ranking the commentaries in a specific order. Okay, And if you just go over here to best and finally top commentaries by series, now we're looking at all of the specific primary major commentary series by ranking. The more in the vertical axis that you see green dots or blue dots, the higher ranked that commentary series tends to be. Old Testament first, New Testament afterwards. So you can see, for example, the NICOT and the NICNT highly ranked across the board. If you have this commentary set, you're going to want to give this one a top prioritization, right? You can also see the NAC series, a lot of high-ranking commentaries throughout the Old Testament, okay? And still a few good ones in the New Testament. Or the WBC, for example, WBC, lots of high-ranking commentaries in the categories of books, okay? So here at bestcommentaries.com and just navigating to the top commentaries by series, you're going to get a very good understanding of which commentaries you should be prioritizing first, okay? This is a great reference work, and this will get you started until you start to discover and learn your commentaries for yourself. The final set of resources, guys, that I want to show you when it comes to commentaries are these Old Testament and New Testament commentary surveys. The Old Testament is done by Tremper Longman, and the New Testament is done by D.A. Carson. Now, what these are are bestcommentaries.com on steroids. Okay, here Tremper Longman has read tons of commentaries on the Old Testament for each book of the Old Testament, and he's giving his top recommendations with details as to why he thinks those ones are best. Okay, D.A. Carson does the same, but he does it for the New Testament. So if you want to dig a little bit deeper than bestcommentaries.com, you can actually jump into each of these commentary surveys and utilize them to try and get more in-depth information. That's going to help you to, again, prioritize those commentary sets in a way that is most beneficial for you because you're referencing what top scholars in the field have said the best commentaries are. Okay, guys, that is it. I thought this was a great question. I just assumed everyone would know what their favorite dictionaries are, their favorite lexicons, their favorite commentaries, but that's absolutely not the case, especially if you bought a high up base package in Logos. Sometimes you don't even know what you have. Now you know some of the things that you're going to want to be prioritizing above the others, and you're going to go ahead and set up your standard prioritization that way. Thank you so much for watching these videos, guys. Please, down in the comments, put your questions in your comments, and I'm going to do the best I can to continue putting out good Logos content for you guys here on YouTube. Please hit like, please hit subscribe, please use our affiliate links down in the description so that we can get a small benefit over at Logos, and guys, please stick around. Thank you so much for supporting Pastor Tanner Ministries here on YouTube. God bless.